In today's video, we're gonna hang out and just have a bit of a jam. So I'll build up the groove, play some lead, and then we'll kind of dissect it and I'll just explain a few of the things that were happening. Quite a few different ways of playing there and I wanted you to see some different musical choices that you could make in different locations on the neck and hopefully you know if you're an advanced guitarist and obviously you already know this stuff but if you're a beginner or an intermediate guitarist a big part of the challenge I think is just figuring out whereabouts on the neck you can actually play these things and why it works that way and I think that's I think that's the challenge, isn't it, of learning lead guitar. So let's break this jam down and figure out what's actually happening here and why the notes work the way they did. If you've been following my work for a while, you'll know that I just have a two-step approach to lead guitar. And it's really simple. The first step is understand the musical situation. The second step is to play something complementary. All lead guitar can be boiled down to that. But you can't do the second step unless you do the first step. <laughs> you have to understand the musical situation, then play something complementary. So to understand the musical situation, what do we need? There's three things that we need. We need to understand the key, the chords, and the mood. Yeah, the vibe of the track, that's it. We know those three things, then we understand the musical situation. Okay, so in this setting, what is the key? Now, you may notice that I was started off playing on the bass guitar. I started off playing here on the 12th fret, which is E. So straight away, you know, we know the chances are likely that this is gonna be either an E major or E minor. I then went down to uh, a D, and then an A, and a G, and an E. So we know that, that you know we're in E major, E major, E minor country here. Remember, if you ever want to work out what key a piece of music is in, just look at the first chord or the last chord. It's always one of those two things. 99 times out of 100, it's one of those two things in popular music. Okay, so if we know we're playing an E, then we can use our E minor pentatonic or our E major pentatonic. Remember, pentatonic scales are just major and minor scales in an abridged form. Okay, so let's break it down. I think the first time around I played something like this. Okay, so what was happening there, everything I played there was in E minor pentatonic. Yeah, so that's down here. Yeah, that's what key I was playing in there. And I dropped in a blues note there, which is this one. So I played. And then you may notice just to create some high end. So we had that low, you know, we had those low notes at the start. Very low, it's as, as low as we can get on the guitar. So just to contrast that, I just twanged on these two notes here at the bottom. Sounds kind of nasty by itself, but in, in context, it provides a counterpoint to the low notes. So it works in that setting. Then I came back up. I bent this note. 
yeah that note always works in minor pentatonics if you bend that because you're bending up to the blues note so it always works <laughs> Finished off playing that E note. And then behind the note I press down just to bend the strings. I don't have a, a I don't have a tremolo arm on here. Just to make that note fade, you know, kind of bend in and out. So everything I just played in that first section was all here. Now there's so much fun that you can have in that section. Don't think of that as like the baby area, you know, like there's so much cool stuff that you can do in that area there. Next, I moved further up the neck and I played something like this. Okay, now what I want you to see there is that that is where the E minor bar chord would be. Yeah, here. Yeah, that, exactly that pattern there of E minor pentatonic. That's where my favorite other pentatonic box to play is. And that's how I work out where it is. At any moment when I move around the neck, I use the bar chord positions to show me where the lead guitar positions are. And if you can marry your scale shapes to your bar chords, you're in business because you will always know where the different boxes are. I think if you don't do that, it's way, way harder. You know, I know some people don't do that and they've learned it a different way, but to me, that's the easiest way. If you understand where those bar chord shape, where the bar chords are, then that tells you where your pentatonic boxes are too. So I was playing E minor pentatonic, or sorry, I was playing an E minor chord there. So the pentatonic box that goes over that looks like this. Now what I like about that particular box is that it has a really, really nice extension down here. It's a little bit lower. That's super simple. Yeah, it's just two, two notes, two notes, two notes. Yeah, you've got six notes there. One, two, three, four, five, six, that you can run around in and then move up into that into that next box pattern. And I also love in that pattern there that you've got this note to bend here. It just sounds great. You even get a couple of squealies in there as well. If you touch on the strings below, so that string and this one. So again, perceive it as an E minor bar chord. But what we're doing is this note here that's getting bent. That's the note that's being bent to create that kind of shrieking minor tonality. And remember, whenever you play any of that, you can always run down into that lower extension to finish it off. Next, you may notice that I switched to playing a major tonality. So what happened there was I switched up here to the top, I put my delay pedal on, and I played something like this. After that moment there, I went up and I played an E major arpeggio, and I also put the delay pedal on to just really change the mood. So I played something like this. So what happened there was I switched over and played in a, a major tonality and I put my delay pedal on to change the mood. So I played an E major arpeggio and just ran it all the way up. But because we had been playing in minor prior to that, when the major section arrives and the delay pedal comes on, it really feels like, ah, something's changed, something's lifted, you know, it's less grimy, the mood is altered. And switching between major and minor tonalities when you're playing is a really great way to keep your solos fresh and provide variety and some relief to the ears of the people that are listening. If you're just banging away in minor the whole time, okay, that can work, that can absolutely work. But whenever you switch tonalities, it always adds a new dimension to a solo. Sometimes you may want that, sometimes you may not, but it's there and it's certainly something that you need to be aware of. It's a great way to really freshen things up and kind of cleanse the palate in the middle of a solo. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this quick jam, picked up a few new ideas and some new tips. If you enjoyed the video, please like it, subscribe to the channel if you want more of this stuff. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.